Good morning. I'm Sergeant Technician Third Class Petty Officer Pinedo. I'm taking on a tour of the U.S. New Mexico. Originally from Texas, but I have a lot of family in Redosa, New Mexico, as well as Albuquerque. I'm ready to show you around, see, show you what life's like on the boat. Follow me. So right now we're top side for the boat. This is our VLS, this is one of our defense systems that we have on the boat. We will fire some tomahawks from here if we need to. Hopefully one day we don't have to unless we're practicing the weapons. So right now we're standing in a lockout truck. We do diver operations in here. So let's say we're underwater at a certain feet, a certain depth. We will put the divers in here, flood it with water, and that's where they escape. It's also an emergency access for sometimes on the boat and sometimes when it's heavy weather outside, we can't stand outside or have the hatches open. We open this, that way when it rains, it drains into the system and we're good to go after that. But this is where we're at right now. Pretty close, pretty tight, but what can I say? The submarine. So thank you for following me. We're now we're inside the boat. We're not, right now we're in upper level. There are three levels to the boat, upper, middle, and lower. I'm gonna take you to one of the places where we live on the boat because a lot of people ask where we sleep and how do we sleep. So let me show you really quick. Go ahead and follow me. So the birdie mount we're in right now is called Skinny Man. The reason why it's called Skinny Man because you're gonna traverse and transfer through the birthing sideways. You turn straight, you can't really fit in here. Not for us big folks, as some would say. So when the casualty response on the boat, there's a fire or a toxic gas, we had to get on emergency breathing. So this right here, the EAB. EAB is comprised of certain gas mask and breathing tube. Give me one moment, I'll put it on for you. So right now what I'm wearing is the EAB. It helps us breathe in the certain casualties where we can't breathe the certain air around us or the fire that's giving us too much carbon monoxide. Sometimes when we do a lot of drills, you see some of the guys put this on, living their Star Wars fantasy of being their favorite very own Darth Vader. And you can see why we do that. Good morning, I am fire control technician, second class petty officer, uh, Tyler tomorrow. This is fire control over here. This is my space. From here, we work with the uh, sonar team across from us. We work with Officer Deck Contact Manager to manage all the contacts out while we're submerged in the ocean and surface. So the missiles you guys saw topside, we enter the solution for those and all the torpedoes that we have on board in the torpedo room, we develop solutions for those too. So after we got doing fire control, now I'm bringing you the ship's control. Ship's control consists of a pilot and co-pilot. They monitor and control all of the ship's systems, as well as changing the depth when we're traversing the ocean using a joystick, just as similar as a plane would. They use this, they could change it for going left to the right, up, down. That's how we are when we go in the ocean. And this is how, this is where basically the magic happens when you're going in the submarine. This is where we control everything. Take you to Petty Officer Oliver, you'll get a little more in depth of what goes on in the machine room, but right now, we're standing next to the diesel, which is the heart and soul of a submarine. So let me go ahead and follow me. I'll tell you, Petty Officer Oliver. Good morning, I'm MMA1 Oliver, and this is the machinery room. Here we create elect emergency electrical power using our Caterpillar diesel engine. It's just like kind of the diesel engine that you'd see in a semi truck going down the road, except for it's attached to an electrical generator. So this charges up the batteries so that if we lose electrical power, we have a way to recharge. Down here, we also have an oxygen generator where we split water and we make oxygen and hydrogen. So the oxygen we can breathe. And we also do other atmosphere control equipment like getting rid of carbon dioxide, getting rid of carbon monoxide, making sure the air is safe to breathe so that we can stay underwater for long periods of time. Good 
Good morning. I'm uh, Ross McClellan, the chief of the boat here on board the USS New Mexico. Here inside the chief's quarters is where all the chief petty officers live, and they are the enlisted leaders on board the boat, and just to ensure the entire crew stays safe and we bring everybody home back to their families. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying their time out in New Mexico. I got to visit you guys uh, in some of your schools a couple, a couple years ago. Really enjoyed the time, and I hope all your science projects are continuing to excel like the ones that I saw when I was there. All right, so now we're gonna walk into the torpedo room after we're showing you machinery room and chief's quarters. This is gonna be the rest of the low level you're about to get to see. The torpedo room comprises of all the armaments, torpedoes, and as well as where all the torpedo men sleep. We're gonna show you around, show you TMC, tell you what he does, and so hopefully you like it. Go on down. Hi, I'm Pedro Centrigo. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about the torpedo room. Uh, this on my right hand side is a Mark 48 torpedo. Uh, this is what we use to defend the ship if necessary. Uh, as you know, we also have birthing down here right now. Um, That's what all these racks are for, these curtains. So if you don't know, sleeping in the torpedo room actually isn't that bad. Um, you have more space than other places on the boat. And then uh, if we continue up forward, we actually have a torpedo tube open so we can actually see the inside of it. Greetings, I am CS1 Myers with the USS New Mexico. I am the leading CS. Here in my cruise mess, we serve food. We also congregate, play games. Uh, and if you would look to my left, you will see that we have a number of pictures uh, from our namesake, just to give us a reminder of why we come out here and do this. So right now we're in the captain's stateroom, the biggest room when it comes to birthing that someone lives in. Reason why is the captain. Calls all the big shots, makes all the big plays. He's the one that controls everything going around around the boat. But right here, I want to show you something specifically. Right here is an insignia submitted back in 2009 from a little girl in New Mexico. The reason why she submitted it is because before the boat became commissioned and officially the USS New Mexico, the Navy put out a competition to the state requiring students to submit a drawing resembling the state as well as the boat. This is the one I submitted and this is the one that got voted highly recommended by Navy, civilians, as well as the military. So with that being said, this is the boat and this is the insignia that we carry on throughout its history until this ship is no longer with us. All right guys, that's it for the tour. Thank you for coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. In the spirit of New Mexico, defendemos nuestra tierra, which translates to, we defend our land. Take care, thank you.